The only thing that will redeem mankind is cooperation. I think we can all appreciate the relevance of that now. But they don't belong in the newsroom! This just in, scientists discover that Canadian bacon is actually ordinary ham. With what Dr. Ashland just said, do you, do you concur? Cop enjoys watching young lovers. I don't think so. Uh, local Bobby gets thumbs up to teen suicide? That's just grossly inappropriate. This made a lot of people very angry and has been widely regarded as a bad move. Don't talk to it, Mary. Don't encourage it. That is quite a horn. Miserable bloody moments, no sense of humor. We're just like having bacon. All right, welcome to The Hollywood Thumb. My name is Daniel King. This is Dave. The Hollywood Thumb is a movie news podcast brought to you by the other podcast. It's just two movies. Uh, short form news segment of the show that we kind of already do, just a little more current. Yeah, I feel like it's a good segment. Going to give the people who listen to the it's just two movies more of what they love, movies. Yeah, well, the the big idea with this is we record the show some parts of the year literally a month in advance so it's hard to talk about current things even though we do the like what you watch in segment on the right. on the main podcast uh but i i've long have kind of wanted to do something that's a little more current and relevant so we are recording this on a friday night the show comes out on uh sunday or monday so yeah it should be it should be mostly current news and i guess let's go ahead and kick off into it Jump right in. Let's see what's going on in the world of news. Warner Brothers purchased Discovery, the Discovery Channel. This is not new news. It's uh, new to me. It's new to you, but it's not necessarily breaking. Uh, but Warner Brothers Disney, or excuse me, Warner Brothers Discovery plans to launch a unified streaming service at some point. So Warner Brothers also owns HBO. But for now, all the platforms are going to be separate. So what would... Uh, how are you feeling about that? HBO, Do Warner they, Brothers, and Discovery all just kind does of... Does Warner Brothers already have their own? I imagine so. I mean, it's... Yeah, I knew Discovery had their Discovery Plus and HBO yeah, we, does. we actually have Discovery Plus. At least watch that shit all the time. All, there's cool stuff on there. Yeah, I think going unified, I feel like HBO is already one of the top tier HBO's streaming got services. Some, HBO's got some really cool shows uh, when they got acquired by Warner Brothers. It it was cool because they had a couple of like brand new release movies that just came out on HBO right. and I, I could watch them like I was excited to see Mortal Kombat. Well, man, it wasn't good. I was excited to watch Godzilla versus Kong. Right, I yeah, quite that enjoyed was, that. Uh, the new Batman was also on the Batman. Yeah, the yeah. Batman. It was on there. I got to got to watch that fresh, too. And other than that, I'm struggling to think of any like movie releases that I was like, fuck, yeah, I just I think that might have been it. Yeah, so uh, that's all. That's that stuff's all going to be melded into one uh, streaming service at some point. I'm assuming, n like, not dissimilar from the way Amazon Prime works now, where you can add channels to it, sort of thing. Well, I mean, Hulu, oh, you think Hulu so? does that as well? I imagine, and just your account will have like an HBO tab or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. I I wonder which one has the biggest library out of those. Like between not HBO, there's I'm, like I get on HBO to look all the time because I'm like yeah, I'm looking they... for a new I'm looking for a new release movie, but there just haven't been a, many on there, at least not ones that I care about. Yeah. Uh, so I I get on there and I look frequently, and I'm like, this is the same shit, and also not very much. Shit. Yeah. HBO's I think it's more widely known for some of its series for sure. Yeah. So that's that's what's uh, shaking over there at um, you know, for the good folks at at Warner Brothers and Discovery. Uh, speaking of Warner Brothers and Discovery, the Batgirl movie <laughs> was was canceled at Warner Brothers and Discovery. Shocking to people who worked on the film. Uh, not like I was particularly looking forward to it, but I'm sure that the, the bat heads out there are, are very disappointed. Yeah, I didn't hear anything of it up until it got canceled. I'm like, oh, crap, they're making a Batgirl movie. Yeah, I remember the buzz about them like starting to film it, but I hadn't seen anything from it. And yeah. I mean, I still haven't apart from one still. Yeah, I remember hearing about the Batwoman TV show. Oh, yeah. Yeah, with uh, the uh, Rocky Rose or Rosie the, Rose. Uh, um, Ruby Rose. Ruby Rose. There it is. Yeah, Nailed but then it. I think she dropped out after neither the first season. Neither of us even season. Googled it. I promise you, neither of us Googled it. <laughs> Yeah, that's when uh, my girlfriend's lady crushes Ruby oh, Rose. Yeah. Oh yeah, well yeah, it's a solid one to have. She's a good looking, good looking gal. Uh, but them them canceling this movie is the part about it that's particularly unusual 
is because it's already way ahead of schedule and in post production. So they're like doing That's the special. Insane. They're done shooting it. Or, Did anything uh, come out to say why? No, because uh, what could be a reason? There was a bit where there where one of the new guys uh, he defended it, but let's see here. I've actually got this a little further down in my notes. No, I don't. I think I just read it and didn't write it down. Yeah, because uh, but, but essentially, Brothers... essentially, this is like a corporate house cleaning. So the, the the whoever is the head of that stuff was recently replaced. And he's like, look, the this whole doesn't fit in the scheme of what we're doing. Everybody in the film industry is laughing at us and he's not far off the mark. Yeah. Uh, Warner Brothers has, I think, had a reputation of being one of the more difficult studios to work with. The, the, the creative people want to make the thing that they want to make and you should let them do that because they're creative people. Yeah, and that's, that's what makes the better That's what makes the better product. Film. Yeah, the better yeah. piece of medium. Yeah, but very, very seldom – it, it, unless the creator's just bad, but I mean, then you shouldn't have funded it. It was your pro project. You right. know? Maybe they sold you on it and then didn't really have any idea what they were doing. I don't know. Do your homework, I guess. But uh, so it, anyway, whoever is in the – he's they're in the middle of all these comic book – different comic book productions. And this guy is like, nope, we're clean slating it. Everything's getting shelved. Uh, all, this, all this stuff. I was surprised they didn't shelve The Flash with all the – Stuff that was coming out with that lead actor. I think they've Ezra done Miller. so. I think that's one where they're like they're just in too deep. They just have like, to try to it's recruit not even, something. It's that's not, the only thing I could think it's of. It's not even financially viable as For the studio, like a tax probably. write off yeah. at this point. You can't do anything with it because it's just too much money. Uh, I do wish I had that information in front of me. Honestly, I, in reference to the bad girl thing, like upon reading that it had been canceled i'll be honest with you i was more excited to see that than aquaman 2 which i'm sure i'm sure will be fine but i just yeah I, as far as i feel the... like i feel like when i go to go see aquaman 2 i already know what i'm getting he's just gonna fight a, a dark smoky a you, dark smoky you thing you know point. that but maybe i don't aquaman's maybe I don't. going to space uh, space aquaman <laughs> You know, those space whales. Amazing. Amazing. I love a space whale. What, what do you think about this, Dave? Chris Pratt's Garfield gets a release date in February of 2024. Hmm? Ooh, 2024? You care about that? Chris Pratt being Garfield? Hating lasagna? Or loving lasagna? Hating Mondays? Yeah, I've always been a fan of Garfield. Yeah. I feel I, like... I don't... When did... Do you know when Garfield came out? Is that just a generational thing that they just redo every couple years? The, so, co the comic strip? Yeah, like how old is Garfield? 70s, like, I would think. I would have to guess. Yeah, I just feel like that's one of the generational cartoons that just... They redo every couple years or every decade. He'll be 40 years old. Debut was June 19th, 1978. Ooh. Yeah, you're right. In the 70s. Fucking Garfield, man. Big fat cat loves lasagna and sandwiches. By the look of this uh, this image, I looked up here. Yeah, no, oh, it's probably spaghetti sandwich. You excited about Chris Pratt playing Garfield? I feel like they're just giving Chris Pratt everything now. They're like, oh, we're making a Mario movie, Chris Pratt. We're making yeah. a Garfield movie, Chris Pratt. We're making a Lego movie, Chris Pratt. We're making a movie where two elves, th their dad is a pair of pants, Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt. <laughs> <laughs> speaking of speaking of caring about things, Dave, do you care about? Uh, Joker Folia Do Joker Two the the movie they get a release date in October of uh, October fourth twenty twenty four just in time for Halloween Ooh Yoko Dos mm hmm uh, maybe uh I like the first one I didn't love it as much as everybody else it wasn't straight my cup of tea yeah I think I'm I'm, I'm trying to give it as long as I can before I rewatch it because I think it was just like the overhypeness of it really. I went in on a sour note, even though because yeah. everybody's like, "Oh, it's fucking amazing, man!" Yeah. And it was good. I did like it, but I just, I think, I think it was overhyped for me at the time, and I want to let that. I was like, I really enjoy movies that are entertaining while you're watching it. Like, of course, I like movies that are thought provoking and things like that. Oh, but yeah. this movie, it just seemed like people loved it for the last couple minutes. Like it. I didn't find that it was super entertaining the entire time. You talking about just, Joker? Yeah. I, the I, first Joker, how it ended, I, I feel like that's why people loved it. I liked the first, I liked the first 75% of it. Uh, and I like the end too. I like it was fine. But if I go back and I think about it, 
the the parts of him like having a mental breakdown and all his yeah. his all that shit like that's the part that I really really enjoyed. But uh, yeah, evidently Lady Gaga is going to be in it. It's the same director as A Star Is Born, which I've not seen. Okay, but yeah. uh, Lady uh, Gaga is going to be Bradley Cooper. It, yeah, exactly film. that one. Uh, but Lady Gaga is going to be Harley Quinn. Who guessed? Ooh. Who would guess? Who would guess she would play that character besides everybody, Dave? Uh, I wouldn't have guessed unless I knew it was that director. Thought she was going to be Schmarly Spin. Well, oh yeah, if you said she was cast in the movie, yeah, right. I, w- I would have guessed that that would have been the character. But as far as her, if you would have said Harley Quinn's going to be in the new Joker, right. who is cast, I definitely wouldn't have said her. Yeah, but I, I don't know if I've I seen her act. Has she only acted in A Star Is Born? No, she's in House of Gucci, and she's quite good in oh, that. Okay. Uh, a yeah, movie which I, a movie I didn't care for. I thought she was pretty good in it. Uh, but like one thing I, I keep wondering about this because they haven't they haven't fucking halted production on this. So they've already done all the switching they're going to do over yeah. at Warner Brothers. I think Joker is a Warner Brothers film. Uh, yeah, but it's not a part of the. Uh... Yeah, but they're they're still proceeding with it. So it makes me wonder if they're going to try to take anything that is pre-existing in the list of like Shazam, Black Adam, because Black Adam That's what I was thinking, as if the Batgirl was going to be a part of their universe building. Right. And that's why they wiped it. So I'm wondering if they're like any of this stuff that's pre-existing, are they going to try to fold Joker, the Joker verse or whatever into that? Or is this going to be its own standalone thing? Because I like the Joker made a shitload of fucking money. It made uh, and in the neighborhood. It, didn't it get made halted. in the yeah. It made in the neighborhood of a billion dollars, uh, so, like as far as the gross. So naturally, this is going to get a sequel. Uh, but like, if the second one makes almost a billion dollars, you're gonna get more. And if that whoever made the first two, if none of those people want to be involved with a third one or a continuation, they will just get someone else. Which is what WB's always done. But with how they ended the first Joker, they could easily do the same Walking Phoenix Joker, but with different directors as far as you don't know what is what he's making up in his head. Oh, so you exactly. can make a loony. You make a whatever. You can make a Tim Burton Joker mm-hmm. and have it fit in the same storyline, which I think, yeah, the way they set it up could be really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That could be good. There's a lot of, there's a lot of fun room to play there. Uh, okay. So uh, in other news, the company Neon, a independent film distribution company responsible for movies like I, Tanya and Parasite two movies I really, really like are thinking about selling out to expand international distribution efforts. Uh, Reportedly, they would be open to a minority stake in an acquisition. Uh, Some of the more recent and upcoming films include Titan, Triangle of Sadness, Cronenberg's Crimes of the Future, and Moonage Dream. What do you think of any of that, Dave, that Neon is looking for a parent company to purchase them? It seems like a pretty smart idea if they're... You seen any... Have you seen any of those? You've not seen any of them? No. Well, I can't, uh, I can't tell I, Tanya you. and Parasite have both been movies. I mean, I just don't really check out that many movies, honestly. Yeah, well, that's understandable. I think uh, you and your old lady would really dig I, Tanya. Like, it's great. Yeah, and that one, based on the true story of Parasite's the... Parasite's uh, disturbing. Of the uh, ice skater. Is that one, I, mm-hmm. I, Tanya? Yeah, Tanya Harding. Yeah, and since I don't know the story of any of that, it probably... That's one that I thought would be interesting. It's, good. it's crazy. It's fucking crazy. And the movie is like... Man, it's pretty fucking close to what actually went down. So uh, it's yeah, I, th- I think it's entertaining. But I I like neon. I like their stuff. I hope that means that they still get to make the th- they get to produce the things that they want. Right, to and I think that I think that like how they're wanting a minority stake in the company. I feel like that would be a great way to get acquired because they could just be acquired by somebody huge, but yeah. then them still be kind of just a production company under that huge conglomerate that would be a good snag for warner brothers right yeah or netflix to be honest yeah uh, netflix is the first one that came to my mind cronenberg isn't that what's a cronenberg david uh, david cronenberg no that's the joke from rick and morty yeah it's like oh we all got cronenberg because david cronenberg loves body horror stuff oh okay so that's what it is yeah exactly so that's that's uh david cronenberg uh he made a new movie called crimes of the future evidently it's quite good i've got it on my watch list like i can't Mm. wait to just come across it and be like fuck yeah 
Moonage Dream, or maybe it's Moon Age Dream, but I would think that would be hyphenated. Uh, is, is like a David Bowie movie that uh, is still. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think that's come out yet. Uh, speaking of things that have come out, though, Prey dropped on Hulu on uh, Friday, August 5th, as we've recorded this. Uh, really good initial reviews, uh, toting a 94% on Rotten Tomatoes and a middling 6.5 out of 10 on IMDb. Uh, personally, I think IMDb is difficult to get a good rating out of, though, so that's probably about where I expected it. That's a prequel to the Predator series, uh, which, in my opinion, consists of like two good movies and a shitload of movies that are there's more laugh value there in the way that it's not good rather than I don't think I've seen any of the newer ones any of the predators is good uh with Adrian Brody and I'm not I, I don't, don't even like yeah, Adrian Brody uh that one's that one's pretty good I think uh or I think the last one I seen was Alien vs Predator well, my, with a movie with Predator in it I wonder if my opinion of it might be a little bit tainted towards Predators being a good movie because I watched like six other ones that just were like yeah, they were okay. Yeah, I seen the trailer for Prey, and it looks intriguing. Like as yeah. far as just the story setup. Yeah, I'm I'm psyched to watch it, man. When I do, I probably will uh, leave a uh, movie review on our our Instagram for it's just two movies. I'm excited to check that out, and I do have tempered expectations. But I, I like the idea that it's like the Great Plains Comanche girl, uh, played by Amber Mid Thunder. Hey, she's got to take on a predator with like a fucking tomahawk and a bow in 1719. And maybe this interaction is what makes human beings a desirable, you know, air quotes, trophy for the predator species. Like, I think that's a fun, that's yeah. a fun idea to play with. Predator through time. There's not been a lot of that. Yeah. I'm also looking forward to see if they can, uh, like, incorporate some some good special effects into that. Because there have been a couple of predator movies where I'm like, that's just sloppy. It's just sloppy. You know yeah, I, I feel mean? like a lot of it can be practical, though. Well, you know, VFX, good VFX is, is hard to come by. It's not that it's necessarily hard to do, but it's hard to do well. Yeah, especially in the time frame of what the movie companies want, you know. It, exactly. And in reference to VFX, uh, it, you might have seen some some buzz going around the internet that uh, the VFX industry is like, uh, with the announcement of the next Marvel phase. Because evidently Marvel is like very time constrained, uh, yeah. like it, just dumping a shitload of work on a company and going getting it done by this day. Yeah, but if that's what makes your industry thrive, I mean, you can't. Right. You can't hate on a what multi billion dollar production company. That's that's exactly right. And I mean, there was some some kind of clunky stuff came out recently for She Hulk, and people were you know having a little backlash against it or whatever. Uh, Tatiana Maslany, who plays uh, She-Hulk attorney at law, uh, defended like the the Marvel VFX artist and criticisms. Uh, she was like, you know, I don't have the quote in front of me, but it, it's to the tune of, yeah, you know, these people are crazy talented and they're just forced to churn stuff out so quickly. It's it's unfortunate they can't have more time to do what they do. Yeah, and I feel like Marvel in a, in a world. I think they kind of were like, hey, you got to say something about this because her series got pushed back a day. For the release, the initial release date was August 19th. Now they, they are, the initial release date was August 17th and now it got pushed back to the 18th. So they only delayed it by one day. But if you're the guy doing the VFX, you, you gotta be like, are you fucking kidding me? You're giving me one extra right. day. That's it. That's crazy. That's probably how the VFX people felt when Sonic came out and it just got trashed. And they're like, all right, well, now no, we gotta got to redo this got, movie. That's got nothing to do with VFX. That's right, got to yeah, do with but design. I mean, that was such yeah. a shit design. Oh, and uh, one other thing I did pick up on my way home from work today. Uh, Keanu Reeves is going to lead in a film adaptation of Devil in the White City. They're going to do it as a Hulu series from Martin Scorsese and Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh. So if you're not familiar with Devil in the White City. I'm not, but I'm familiar with all those people. That is, Devil in the White City is a, Devil in the White City is a semi, I, I think it's like some, some fiction mixed with some truth. You know what I mean? Uh, but it's a book about the serial killer H.H. H. Holmes. Oh, okay. From the Chicago World's yeah. Fair that had the big murder Remember, castle. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's, uh. I am assuming Keanu Reeves is either going to be a detective or H.H. H. Holmes, but it doesn't say. But I mean, seriously, from from Martin Scorsese and Leonardo DiCaprio starring Keanu Reeves in that story, I'm into it. Yeah. I think I think that'll be fun. 
uh, unless it's just bad, I mean, which is not impossible. Things can right. be bad for unforeseen reasons, but but uh, yeah, I mean that's that's uh, that's the news so far, and uh, that that's all I've got. Yet. David, uh, anything to add? Anything? Uh, no, I felt like one interesting thing I did hear this week was about the you hear about the Pinocchio movies coming out. Oh yeah, directed by Guillermo del Toro. Yeah, but there was another one too. But yeah, the del toro one was the one that i was more interested in i didn't realize it was i don't know if it's stop motion or it looks, what but uh it, it looks just, like a claymation stop motion thing to me yeah. yeah it looks super just like they said it's taken six years to produce yeah it just looks like, fucking rad yeah it's got that kind of james and the giant peach feel you know what i mean yeah you never seen james and the giant peach uh, can't say that I have. Well, it's got that feel. Ooh. It's got the feel of that Pinocchio trailer that you watch. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so that's all. That's uh, that's everything I've got for the news. Uh, until next time, uh, my name is Daniel King. This, this has been Dave. Dave. Yeah, uh, we're doing a little bit of the news. Please check out our parent podcast. It's just two movies where we talk about a good movie and then a bad movie. Leave a like if you could, or a review on whatever podcast platform you choose. Uh, until next week, uh, that uh, that's the that's the news. I feel invigorated. I woke this morning with a tumescent glow. Bad news, Captain. We've only got one bullet. Little about my life has been kosher ever since. Stop being such a dick. Come on, Ed, it's bullcrap. It's not the bazaar. It's a very naughty boy. Missed it by that much. Your love of the halfling elite has clearly slowed your mind. Oh, that didn't pan out. A saucy line will not get you far with me. Good speech. Nice and short. Needs more time for drinking. <laughs> Rick on the ale! He's been a thirsty! The Hollywood Thumb is brought to you by It's Just Two Movies and is a production of Blue Cheese and Bacon Studios. Both can be found wherever you get your podcasts.